Hello CS116 and uh, welcome to this little video about diagramming programs. Diagramming programs is very important for this course and so I want to make sure everyone's clear on how I expect them to do it. Uh, basically there's two parts to this presentation. Part one we'll talk about uh, the big picture. Where does diagramming fit into the overall programming process? And the second part we'll talk about specific diagramming techniques, all of which are good and all of which work. Um, but uh, there's one I'm going to recommend that you use because it's, uh, it's effective for the um, particular way that we're going to do programming this course. And we'll also look at some Java code at the end to see exactly what it looks like. At the end of this presentation here, I'm going to give you the assignment for program one. So please do, if you don't want to watch all the, the stuff uh, uh, just to describe the diagram process, at least go to the very end and make sure you understand what we, what's expected in program one. Okay, so the big picture. Let's talk about the IPO model, which is the input processing output model, system analysis, programming, and testing. Since the very old days of computer science, uh, researchers and practitioners have considered the IPO model as the very basic fundamentals of how computers work. Something's got to be an input uh, to, the, to the process, and something's got to be an output. And that also works for human processes too, but uh, the old saying, garbage in, garbage out, uh, you want to make sure that your inputs and, and outputs are, are in sync with each other. Now, in the case of designing a system, the input is the problem that people are trying to solve, and the output is the diagram that explains how the computer will actually execute this particular uh, sequence of steps. So the design process is done by a human being and the output of that process is a diagram. If you think about the overall picture of system analysis and design, this is a very simplified model here, but basically for Java programming we'll be doing this part here, the analysis, we'll have some kind of a problem, for example in this case we'll have the uh, leap year problem, how do we calculate a leap year? There will be a design. What are the sequence of steps that need to be done? And we will document these steps in a diagram. That is the analysis piece. Now, in the programming piece, we will take this diagram and we'll code it into a text file. And we will uh, end up with an output of source code. So each of these circles here, these ovals here, are, are basically their own independent IPO models. Now, after the source code is created, that'll be an input to the compile process. I'll show you how that's done in another video. And the output of the compile process will be an untested program. Then we will run the program and test it, look at the output, verify that it does in fact solve the problem that, um, that's being, uh, that we originally had. So we will go over all this in class, but just FYI, this is, how the, this is where the diagram fits into the big picture. So now let's step into the next phase of this, this presentation here, we want to look at some examples of diagrams. Um, <clears throat> there's the oldest, well, I'm not sure if it's the oldest one, but certainly a very old one is flowcharts. In the 1970s, late 70s, the Nazi Schneiderman charts came out and people used those. Um, the warnier or diagrams were also popular in the, in the 80s. Uh, when I started programming, those were, those were new, <laughs> but now they're not. Um, and so, um, and we'll look at some Java code. So let's take a look at a flowchart. A flowchart, you're probably all familiar with that. As a matter of fact, the IPO model that I showed you at the beginning is a flowchart. And uh, the good thing about the flowcharts is everybody knows them. It's very hard to find somebody in the computer science field who's a practitioner or a researcher who doesn't know flowcharts. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who are not even computer science people understand flowcharts. So even though it is kind of, you know, busy in there, it is uh, it is a good method. And you can kind of follow along, get the year from the, this is, a, this is a leap year program, get the year from the user input, set the leap year equals to false, and then basically if it's if it's divisible by four, set the leap year true, and, and just go through this process. Uh, this fully enumerates the process necessary to compute whether or not a year is a leap year, and so this is a flow chart. Now some people, uh, if you want to use flowcharts, it's fine with me. It just has to be uh, proper form. Um, and you're going to find that it might be challenging in certain complex programs, but I have no problem with flowcharts. NS charts. Uh, strongly recommend you consider using NS charts because a lot of the other 
top professors in our department uh, love this particular model. Uh, I like it too. Uh, you're welcome to use it in this course. Basically, this is exactly the same as a flow chart. Every sentence in this particular uh, diagram, a like get year from user input, it's the same. It's the same as in the flow chart. It really is a flow chart. It's just organized in a instead of bubbles and squares and di and, and di uh, diamonds all over the place. It's in a nice little package that can be presented on a single page of paper. Um, there are tools that help you can that you can will help you develop these things, and uh, the results are exactly the same. Uh, I hope you've learned this one in CS 105, so you should know Nazi Schneiderman diagrams. Um, but uh, I don't know, it's like anything. Some people like them, some people don't. I, I strongly recommend that you consider these because a other people in the department, well, you'll see these again. Let's put it that way. So it's one another way. Now, in my case, I prefer the Warney or diagram, and I'll tell you why. Um, these type of uh, charts, so the flow chart and the NS chart, are designed to get an accurate, granular, detailed look at a process. They're not really designed for structured, um, I guess, structuring your code. Um, you can structure them using these, but they're not designed for structuring. Whereas Warney or diagrams are designed for maybe business people or people who are just you know, brainstorming a problem. Like you start off with a problem and say, eh, I want to print whether or not something's a leap year. But I don't know all the details. You know, these, these details off to the right, I don't know about those. Well, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to, it's going to have to have input processing and output. I know that. So let's, what are the, going to be my inputs? What are going to be the process steps? And what's going to be the output? And you can kind of get a, get a high level look at the um, uh, problem. Sometimes, like for business people, this might be all they need to know. But for the programmers, we're going to need to go to a little bit more detail. So this is typical pseudocode. Uh, this again, get year from user input. That's the same as get year from user input here and get year from user input here. So it's the same. This layer here is the same um, as for as the other pro, the other diagrams, but it gives you a nice look at the detail. And when you're just learning programs, sometimes understanding the big picture of the uh, diagram is helpful. So if this is helpful for you, fine. If not, use the others, whatever you want to do. But this here does give you some detail. And let's suppose, like say, get year from user input. Maybe maybe you don't uh, know how, how do I get the year from the user input? Well, you can draw additional detail and you can just keep on going farther, farther right until you get down to code. You should really never have code in a diagram. A diagram should be something that will be codable by the programmer. So uh, if you start putting in actual Java code or C++ code, it's not a diagram anymore. Not at least not a not a functional diagram. Diagrams shouldn't be should be language independent. You should be able to use the same diagram in whatever implementations is needs to be done. But isn't that nice how you can? Um, Take this step, get year from user input, and you can say, well, I've got to declare a variable, I've got to prompt the user, got to store the user response. So you can go more and more detail uh, until you get to the point where you just have to code it. Um, sometimes, too, like for example, one of these things might be so obvious, it's not necessary to include it because any programmer would know that. Whereas one or two lines might be very detailed, it might be tricky, those need to be diagrammed carefully. So this, this form also a lot helps you to, um, I guess, spend your time diagramming stuff that needs to be diagrammed. Now let's take a look at the code. And one of the reasons, again, I like the Warnier or style is it organizes your code into, into chunks. So here we have this big um, function here, big class, it's called leap year, print leap year statement. And this print leap year statement is the same thing you see here. You do not see that in the NS chart or the flow charts. It's not part of their part of their typical form. And then here you've got initialize inputs and perform computations. Again, initialize inputs, perform computations, and print output. So you've got the I use double you know equal signs to 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 organize my major uh, sections of code. I use the uh, just the minus signs to do the minor. Uh, sections of code, and then I'll put sidebar comments here for the specific detail code. So you see how get year from user input, get year from user input. The the comments fit perfectly into the code, um, or they can. 
if you get comfortable with this particular method. So uh, again, whatever whatever method you decide to do, flow charts are great, NS charts are great, Warney or diagrams are great. Uh, just remember that you're going to see these NS charts things again. So you know, make sure that you don't. You should have learned it in 105. Make damn sure that you know it. I will. You know, if you use it, uh, that'd be good. But uh, but Warney or is cool too. Now um, so now you understand basically what the big picture is and how to diagram in Java and what, it was, what it's going to look like when it actually comes down to the Java code. You should be familiar with IPO model systems analysis and really where diagramming fits into the overall process and then you've seen some examples. So hope that's been helpful. Now let's, uh, let's talk about program one. Program one is going to be a tip calculator. I want you to write a program that computes the tip and the total for a uh, a given check that you would have at a restaurant or some kind of service oriented thing. So part one, I want you to make three diagrams. I won't make you do three diagrams every time, but on this one I want to see all three of them. This is, this is focusing heavily on diagrams, this assignment. So I want to see three diagrams, a flow chart, an NS chart, and a Warnier or diagram that accomplishes the steps that you see right here. Then at the end I want you to write the Java code for the diagrams. So submit your work for the diagrams in an MS Word document to Canvas and I will explain to you how to uh, submit your code in another video. Uh, you can use Cloud9 or you can use the CSIS server for the code and we'll again go over that in uh, another video. But the key for this one is you're going to make three diagrams to, um, to perform this tip calculation. So. Look forward to seeing you in class. Hope this video was helpful.